Strong wood, strong wood. Oh, this isn't a porn video, if anybody's worried. This is an Indiana Jones ranking. Uh, that was just a quick tribute to one of the characters from the, from the second film, one of his bits of dialogue. Just, just roll the intro. Hi guys, so for a while now I have been chomping at the bit to do an Indiana Jones ranking and today is that day. I absolutely love this franchise, I've been a fan of it for pretty much most of my 43 years on this planet. I have seen four of the five films at the cinema. The only one I haven't seen is Raiders of the Lost Ark because I would have been about one when that film came out, but it's my hope that one day the film will be re-released on the big screen as some kind of 50th anniversary thing or something like that and then I'll be able to say that I've seen all of them at the cinema. That will be really cool. I've got the original trilogy on DVD, though I don't really get these discs out anymore because if I'm going to watch these films I'd rather watch the HD upgraded versions on Disney. I think I've got the fourth film on DVD as well, somewhere. Uh, fifth film? No, it's, it's not come out yet. But enough rambling, let's get into the actual ranking itself. One last thing before we do, it is about 30 degrees today in the UK which is absolutely bonkers for September. So if you see any sweat on my face during any of these video clips just, just assume it to be a kind of homage to when Indy goes somewhere really hot like Egypt or South America, you know. Right, let's jump in and find out what I've got at number five. At number five, we have Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Probably not much of a surprise to anyone that this one has come last. But the film does have a lot of sentimental value to me because I saw this film with my wife in 2008 and we'd only just got together at the time. We're still together to this day. This was the first time we'd ever gone to the cinema together to see this film. I don't remember talking about the film much afterwards I just don't think it left much impression on us and I've not gone back to it much since then personally um, I watched it quite recently because I knew I was going to be doing this ranking and I was just massively disappointed by it the first half is actually really good though I like the stuff in the in the giant warehouse and then the bomb site thing Indy in the in the, in the fridge some people don't like that but I thought that was really cool and the relationship between Indy and his son is actually pretty well done for a lot of this film but the film suddenly dive bombs like halfway through. It does all this good work in the first half and then just wastes it in the second half. What The rot sets in during the, the big chase through the Amazon, is that where it is? Uh, it's one of the most horribly put together car chases I've ever seen. It's full of CGI and things that are just completely unrealistic. It's almost cartoonish. Indy Sun swinging through the trees like Tarzan to catch up with the cars and it's all just silly and crap. and. The film never recovers after that. Indy's relationship with his son is just non-existent in the last 35-40 minutes. It's like that whole thing is just completely forgotten about and all the action that takes place in the temple towards the end, it's just boring. It's Compared to the endings of the, of the first three films, this ending is just really bad to sit through. So easily the worst film for me. It's going to be a real dilemma in the future when I go back to these films. Do I skip this fourth one or do I watch it just for the full indie experience that's something I'll have to think about another day I guess. And number four we have Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny I saw this one with my 12 year old son really cool for him to get to see one of these films before the end of the franchise I really enjoyed this film and I can't really think of any flaws with it to be honest I was trying to think of some on the way home just for conversation's sake but I I couldn't think of anything, honestly. The only bad thing in this is Harrison Ford's age. He's a little bit uncomfortably old at times. I mean, he was touching 80 when he made this, and it does show in certain sequences. Realistically, he's, he's too old to be gallivanting on horses in underground tra train tunnels and things, but the movie's pretty good, pretty damn good, I've got to say. I, I love the sequence with the de-aged indie on the train. That is superb. The whole time travel thing I think works really well. I think some people might think it's a little bit too silly, it's going a bit too far, but if you look back at the other films, they've, they've, there have always been supernatural things in, in all the indie films pretty much with the Grail and the Ark and the aliens and things. So what they do in this movie with the time travel, I, I think it's fine, honestly. Uh, the new character, the sidekick, 
Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I think the actress's name is. I think she does a pretty good job, I've got to say. I, 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 I probably like her equally with uh, the Sun character from the fourth film. And overall, I was just very satisfied with this film. I think it's a really good way to end the franchise. Obviously, it's not going to touch the original trilogy. It never was, but it's good. It's really good. And I'm so, so glad that this film finishes things off now instead of The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And number three, we have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I saw this one with my gran. I think I was about seven. I was still living in the West Midlands at the time. I, th I think I saw all these films with different people, now that I think about it. This is another flawless one, honestly. For the longest time, this was the trilogy closer, and it did such a good job of matching up to the quality of the first two films. I've only got one very, very small complaint about this one, and it's, it's oh so small. So when... Indy's in the library in Venice. He points out that they need to look for a number 10 because they've already found two other numbers on the window. And the 10 is, it's, it's on the floor. It, it's co it covers like the entire floor. You can't miss it. And yet the characters are sort of wandering around and they can't spot it. It, it always rankles with me when I watch the film. And then Indy feels the need to go up these spiral stairs to point out the 10 instead of just pointing it out so they can get on with it. But it, it's only a small thing. In terms of the things that I like, there's so many great sequences uh, during this film. It, it's a funny film as well because of the relationship between Indy and his dad. There's one moment in particular that I'd say is my favourite. In fact, in fact, I'm going to mention two. So one of the really funny moments is when Indy and his dad get on this airship and the villain finds um, his dad, but then Indy comes and shoves the villain off the airship and everybody looks horrified, so Indy just says, No ticket! Absolutely love that moment. And another funny one is when they're in the castle and they've been captured and the same villain actually comes up and... Oh no, sorry, it's the it's the blonde woman first. She comes up to Indy's dad and kisses him and, and says, that's how we say goodbye in Austria. And then the villain comes up behind her and says, this is how we say goodbye in Germany, Dr. Jones, and just punches uh, Indy such great script writing i just absolutely laugh so much every time i see that moment but the film's f full of funny moments like that really classic film and the fact that it's only come number three in this ranking just go just goes to show how tough the competition is today oh num shibai oh num shibai at number two, we have Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I saw this one in the cinema with my parents. I, I was only about four or five at the time, and it was a magical experience. Honestly, the film blew me away at that age. I particularly loved the minecart sequence to the point where the next time that Raiders was on the TV, there's a scene where the villains are walking through the desert and you can see like a minecart in the background. And I pointed at it and was like, I think this is the one with the minecart, Mum. And... She was like, no, 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 that, that's not the same film. That one's not available on TV yet. Uh, but being a kid, you know, he sort of... <laughs> you fall into the trap of, of making these kind of errors. But this film, for, a, for the longest time, this was my favourite. I'd say for 20, 30 years, this was my favourite. I'd always defend it. I'd always say to people, no, you're wrong. This one's the best one. Temple of Doom, this one's the best. But I've kind of relented just in recent times. I think the older you get, the grumpier you get, uh, you start to get more irritated by the flaws in movies. And this film has quite a few that maybe I would have ignored once upon a time. The film that I've got at number one today has virtually no flaws, you know. But this film, it's full of them. <laughs> if you look hard enough, they're there. Such as the magical vat of water that can travel through three miles of tunnels with lava on the floor all the way. And uh, the magical raft that can fall out of a plane and then fall off a cliff and nobody dies it just floats just the right way to land in the river come on bullshit and there's a few other moments that i could talk about which are just as bad you know um so you have to kind of turn a blind eye at times in the in this film but it's so much damn fun this is the most horror-esque of the indiana jones films which is great for me being such a horror fan i still love it it's still an amazingly good time i still watch it so regularly but yeah, it has sadly drifted down to number two. I've got one more complaint before we move on about this film. Why the hell would you hire a gorgeous woman like Kate Capshaw and then call her Willie? 
I mean, who the frig wants to date a woman called Willie? It doesn't even matter how good looking she is. You don't want to date a woman with a name like that. So at number one, we have Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes, I have finally succumbed to the charm of this movie and decided it is the best indie film. I've always loved this film. I've just never always had it as my absolute favorite, but I do now, re-watching it recently. It, it just brought it home to me just how good this movie is. The soundtrack is so emotional. And all the way through, you get sequence after sequence that just blows your socks off. I mean, you can tick them off on your hand. The, thing in the temple at the beginning with all the traps and then the natives chasing Indy and, and then you get that incredible fight scene in Nepal in the bar and then you get all those great scenes in Egypt with the well of souls and the the guy with the swords and Indy shoots him dead and and then you get a really brave ending the type of which that I just don't think you see in Hollywood these days you know Indy's strapped to a post and then the villains just die by themselves pretty much but it absolutely fits the story what happens with this ending and I just wish more script writers these days would look to this film for inspiration and for the penny to drop that you don't have to do the cheesy final fight with you know where it looks like the villain's gonna win and then the hero comes out with a quip and somehow finds a way to win at the last minute you know we've seen that a million times but this movie did something different and it's no worse for it and you get that incredible final moment where you see that big government bu government building with all the secrets they've hidden away just fantastic stuff this movie is pure awesomeness i did a top 100 movies of all time uh series of videos recently and raiders of the lost raiders of the lost ark came 11th I think it was either 11th or 12th just outside my top 10 but it's absolutely brilliant right that's it then for today that was my Indiana Jones ranking do let me know in the comments how you would rank these movies and I'll be back to doing another video very very soon until next time cheerio bye bye